going back a little bit to, you know, we were talking about books there and how you studied subjects and you developed this, all these new skills whilst in a place that is designed to take the hope out of people. And, you know, once you were, you were given the sentence of death and I remember you turned, you took, you put this spin on it that I, I couldn't believe. And you said that you were going to study the dictionary until you could give the best speech for your death penalty. Like that is wild. And, and, and what was that process like of studying the dictionary and trying to teach yourself this amazing language so you can speak so eloquently? Like what is the purpose behind that for you? In the aftermath of being attacked as a child, I developed aphasia. Aphasia affects the process of language. And it's really strange for a person to have aphasia to be a really good reader because it causes dyslexia. So despite the fact that I read over 9,000 books before I stopped counting, like literally, I shouldn't have been able to do that mentally because aphasia blocks the process and retention of uh, memory from reading. Because reading is a artificial process we as humans develop. Language is an auditory process. That's why you still hear things while you're reading. <laughs> yeah, the mind is complex. So the, th the crazy thing about all this was the dictionary had to be able to give me enough words to search my mind for so that I can compose a death speech because they were going to put me to death. Now, I was only going to have a short amount of time to try and hold my shit together as a 20-year-old kid when they put me in the electric chair and then flipped the switch. So at first, I used to practice sitting upwards with my head up against the wall with my eyes closed and try and come up with something. It was so hard, Lewis. It was so terrifying. How am I going to tell people I forgive them for murdering me for something I didn't do and then tell them who I am all in a minute? Like, how am I going to do this? Like, it was driving me nuts. And it wasn't until I learned about neutrinos and how they pass through the earth and everything else because there are particles emanating from the sun and they don't have any boundaries. They pass through the, any hard surface you think. Diamonds, nothing stops this thing. And that Japanese scientist had hollowed out a, a mountain in Japan to study the rate of neutrinos that pass through the earth. When I found out about that, I began practicing my death speech because I had empowered myself at that point to overcome my speech impediment. And I had this beautiful speech ready for him, boy. It was all based on forgiving them for not knowing that I was as beautiful as the neutrino passing through the earth. And I could forgive them for their ignorance without having to do much more than explain in this beautiful, profound way my elevation to them by speaking to them in a manner they could have never fathomed themselves speak. But then came the torment of practicing his speech for 20 years. And then they kicked me off the stage and they took the microphone off my hands and they said I couldn't make the speech. So I went to the mountains and I practiced it one time, one time only. I drove this Jeep all the way up into the mountains and I got up on this giant boulder overlooking this mountain. And I practiced my speech one time perfectly beautifully and i burst out crying because i i realized right at that moment i would never be this free i would never appreciate being this free because i just got out of prison there's no way i could ever feel this way again and i was heartbroken because i could never be as free as i was the day i gave my speech Fascinating, absolutely fascinating.